good morning from the garden. So at the end of the last video, I mentioned about doing a video on garden bird photography. So I've come out into the garden this morning. So guess what? I'm going to do some garden bird photography. So I've been coming out here the last couple of weeks photographing the birds. Uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to share with you how I go about getting the photographs. So from my camera setup to the camera settings that I use to the feeders that we have out here, where, where they are in relation to trees and what have you. So how I go about getting the photographs. So first up, we'll talk about the camera. The camera I use is the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. Now it can shoot up to seven frames per second. It has a great high ISO performance as well as great autofocus system. Now when photographing wildlife, I also attach the vertical grip. This allows me to quickly change from a horizontal composition to a vertical composition. It has the shutter release button on it and it has various buttons on the back, such as allowing me to change my autofocus point. Now the lens that I use for wildlife photography is the Canon 100 to 400 mm zoom lens, which is very versatile for wildlife photography. And I also sometimes attach the 1.4 times teleconverter, giving me an effective focal length at the 400 mm end of 560 mm. Now this will allow me to either get my subject bigger in the frame or allow me to actually move further back from my subject. So the exposure settings that I use so this lens has a variable aperture from 4.5 at the 100 mm end down to 5.6 at the 400 mm end. Now I'm usually shooting around about the 400 mm end, so I'm using an aperture of 6.3 or 7.1. So I close down ever so slightly because I find that gives me slightly better quality. Now if I'm using the teleconverter, I automatically lose one stop of light. So that takes my widest aperture at the 400 mm end down to f8. So I normally just stick with that. In terms of my exposure time, I found that anywhere between 1 500th of a second and 1 1,000th of a second is ideal. Because these, these, these wee birds, they do kind of move around quite a bit and you want to obviously freeze, you know, freeze any head movement. So I found those kind of exposure times ideal. Now, if you're trying to photograph a bird in flight, you're probably talking at least 1 2,000th of a second because their wings beat so fast to try and freeze that movement again. You need a high exposure time as possible. So my ISO, that is just dictated by what I've set for my aperture and my exposure time to get a correct exposure. This camera has three autofocus modes, one shot, AI focus and AI servo. Now one shot is just for your static subjects. AI focus is for a static subject which may all of a sudden move. So the camera will try and refocus on it as the subject moves. AI servo is for subjects which are already moving. So say you have a subject either coming towards you, going away from you, or moving across your plane of focus. As that subject's moving, the camera will continually focus and hopefully as you press the shutter button, you will continue to get sharp images. So my camera has various drive modes, just like any other camera. It has single shooting. So basically each time you depress the shutter, it will just take one shot. It has high speed continuous. Now that's the mode that I use most of the time. It shoots at seven frames a second. Uh, low speed continuous, now that, uh, I think that's about three or four frames a second. Silent single shooting and sing silent continuous shooting. Now, the silent modes in this camera are not quite silent, so I normally just use the regular high speed continuous. And then it's just got your normal self timer. So the high speed continuous mode, although it does seven, fr seven frames a second, I don't just do trrrr. What I'll do is I'll fire off a couple of frames. I mean, it might be seven, you know, three, four, five, six, seven. But then what I'll do is I'll take my finger off the, the shutter button, refocus and start firing again because obviously your subject may slightly move during those, those shots, so you need to refocus. Now the 5D Mark IV actually has 61 focus points, allowing you to really fine tune exactly where you want to focus in the frame. Now well, most of the time I actually use the center focus point, so I focus on my subject and recompose, take the shot. However, yes, there will be times when I will use an off-center focus point. Now beyond that, I can actually select a cluster of either four or nine focus points, which is really helpful with bigger subjects. So whether it be a bigger wildlife subject or say a, a motor vehicle moving towards you, moving away from you, you've got more chance of focusing on that subject. So the majority of the time I will actually handhold the camera. Uh, the, this lens here is not a heavy lens by any means, so I can handhold it from, you know, for good lengths of time. I'm moving around the gardening as well, and I just find the tripod be, would be a bit more cumbersome for that. However, I do have a setup where I have a garden shovel 
uh, in the lawn and so I kind of sit down in a, a small box and the, the tripod is really great for that. It saves me kind of just sitting down there and just trying to hand hold it. You know, it's, it's just a fixed position. So I, using a tripod is just much more beneficial for that. Okay, so we, here we have our main feeders. Uh, we have the seed feeder here. We have a peanut feeder just behind. And out of shot, I don't know if you can see it, is at the back is a, a fat ball feeder. We also have a little tray here with, uh, we put seeds and mealworms and then a little a water feeder here as well. I also have on the lawn over there, uh, a feeder on the ground, uh, which is predominantly for robins, but I've also been getting chaffinches and sparrows coming down to that. Now, the reason why I've got that is I've got a shovel behind that as well, but we'll get to that a bit later. So how do I get my shots? Well, I stand roughly as far as I am now from the feeders, which is about maybe about eight, nine feet. Now to the left of the feeders, there is a, there is a tree where the birds will normally come from and go into the feeders. And there has been a hive, hive of activity in the tree just recently. Um, yeah, so they will go from the tree into the feeder and I'm photographing them most of the time in the tree. Um, so beyond that, it's just kind of looking for clean backgrounds as well. Um, they will also use the railing of the decking here and that can make for some nice photographs for some nice angles of the railing coming cutting across the frame. I got a couple of nice shots yesterday of a, a green finch and a robin. Um, also I've had starlings on the railings at the back as well with the really iridescent colours. And that's about it for, for you know, the, the photographs around the feeders. I've tried to start moving on to the next level where i am been trying to photograph the birds flying from the tree to the feeder. And what I've been doing is I've been using a tripod for that. And what I do is I stand roughly where I am now and I, I focus on the feeder. Then I put the lens into manual focus, recompose in between the, the tree and the feeder, and then just hope that a bird's gonna fly across through my frame in the same plane of focus and get a shot. So it's a case of just waiting for when you think a bird's gonna fly, continually depress the shutter and hopefully you've got a, a sharp shot. I got two shots yesterday which were sharp, but the bird is way too close to the feeder, so it's almost out of frame. But you know, it's a start, so it's a, it's a work in progress, shall we say. So my second feeding setup is this ground feeder here. Now the idea behind it was to attract the robins who are, who are ground feeders, but it's also attracted green finches and sparrows. It has mixed seeds and mealworms in it. So the, the hope is that the, the bird will come down, either land on the shovel first, go down and get food, or go down and get food and land on the shovel. So it's really nice rustic handle of the shovel here. Now I previously was using the fork, um, Actually, yesterday I got a nice shot of a, a female house sparrow on the, the base of the fork, wherever the handle of the fork's not so nice. So I preferred this shovel here. So my, hopefully today I'll be able to get some shots of a, a bird on top of the handle. Now where I've actually placed the shovel isn't by accident. Uh, there's some thought going into it. So in terms of light and background. So the sun is over my left shoulder at the moment. So this is the early morning light. So it's hitting the, the shovel directly. So hopefully when a subject lands on the shovel in the morning, it will be bathed in some nice light. In terms of background, as I've mentioned earlier, I want as clean as background as possible. So there's a lots of nice greens, blues, because there's a sea lock behind it. So when that fills up the water, it'll be a really, really nice dark blue, depending on the height of my tripod, well, the height of the camera in relation to the handle. And also there's some really nice greens and browns that would be thrown out of focus. It'd be a really nice clean background. So when you're placing your, shall we say, your furniture that you want your subject to land on, um, just really think about the backgrounds. Also foregrounds as well. As I mentioned earlier with the tree, uh, say there's a bird in the tree, I'm just about to photograph it, and all of a sudden I'll notice just a branch kind of almost kind of sticking up in front of it, cutting through the, the subject. I won't take the shot because it's not clean enough. Um, Backgrounds in trees are harder because obviously you've got a lot of branches. So I, hopefully the, the wide aperture will throw those branches out, out of focus enough to be not to be a distraction. But certainly a, 
a branch coming across the front of the subject for me would be too distracting. So it's really something, for me, it's really important uh, in terms of clean foreground and background, as clean as possible anyway. Before I go, I want to talk to you about the two P's, patience and perseverance. So patience, you know, you can't just expect to come out your door with your camera and get shot straight away. Okay, you may get lucky and you get shot straight away. Sometimes I wait half an hour, sometimes I have to wait an hour for the shot. So I just have patience, uh, especially with my landscape photography. You know, I could be sitting there for one hour, two hour waiting for light. It's the same with wildlife photography. You know, you're waiting for your subject to come into the frame. Perseverance, well, basically you just got to stick at it. I mean, I've been coming out once, twice a day, when I can over the last three weeks or so. So yeah, just stick with it and you'll get the shots. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it useful in terms of the camera settings that I use, where our feeders are in relation to the trees, you know, looking for clean foregrounds and clean backgrounds. So if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, any comments appreciated. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell icon below to be notified of when another video is uploaded. Until that one, bye bye.